Hello and welcome to EBC News World uh, from the capital Addis Ababa with the news I'm Bini Amkitana bringing you the last test uh, news update. Here are now the top stories. Uh, UNESCO calls for collective collaboration to reach the goal of restitution of African historical site. And Nigeria's Supreme Court validates President Mbutu's election and dismisses appeal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the news from the EBC and the capital Addis Ababa with the news from Binyam Gitana. Once again, here are now the top stories in full. Proposed legislation on personal data protection, rural land use and management and converting the existing industrial park system into a special economic zone have been referred to the House of People's Representatives by the Ethiopian Council of Ministers for approval. Establishing a legislative framework and controlling laws for people's rights and obligation in the nation is the goal of the Personal Data Protection Bill. Strengthening tenor security, adjusting living standards for farmers, semi-pastoralists and pastoralists, and personalizing an excellent rural land data recording and registration system are the objective of rural land use and management bill. The purpose of the measure to convert industrial parks into a special economic zone is to direct the development management, boost regional trade networks and expedite economic growth. Meanwhile, Ethiopia and South Africa agreed to cooperate in military fields. Head of the main department of education and the training of the Ethiopian National Defense Force, Lieutenant General Yimmer Mekonen, spoke with the Director of Education and Development of the Defense Force South Africa, Brigadier General Zolia Dawa. The two sides agreed to cooperate in the field of education and military training. The agreement will create opportunities to share experience between the two countries in their effort to modernize their respective armies, Lieutenant General Yimmer said. Director of Education and Development of the South African Defense Force, Brigadier General Zolwia Dawa reiterated Ethiopia's immense contribution to South Africa's freedom. Moving on, uh, the Global Startup Award Africa Summit in the capital Addis Ababa has recognized 15 out of 17 African startups as innovative solutions to continental problems. The award ceremony, attended by Labor and Skills Minister Mufarit Kamil, high level government officials, and representatives of international organizations, praised the award for promoting innovation and entrepreneurship in Africa. Mufarit congratulated Coffee Resurrect, an Ethiopian startup, for winning the Green Tech Category Award. The startup shortlisted for the Global Innovation, sorry, Inno Innovation Initiative Group are believed to bring solutions to global problems in their field of engagements. The GCA is organized by the Ethiopian Ministry of Labor and Skills in partnership with the Ethiopian Entrepreneurship Development Institute and a global innovation initiative group. This is what a traditional Harari house, like, main room looks like. This red colour 
here represent Chelenko when they fought a war um, and it represents the bloodshed of the soldiers um, just thing that I wanted to show you guys oh these so these kind of like inserts you can see them they go all the way in <laughs> I thought I'd show you um, the traditional clothes that Haredi people wear. This is just home clothes, it's not Haredi, it's East African in general to be honest. Um, Somalis wear it, Eritreans wear it, Ethiopians wear it, Kenyans wear it, um, Sudanese people wear it. I've, like, yeah, pretty much. It's just a loose piece of clothing. Um, we call it a sheet. Yeah, this is. Uh, number one traditional piece of clothing this is more of a new fashion and um, this is not the classic I don't have any other classic design but you would have seen me you would see me wear the classic ones at some point um, they're yellow and like purple stripes <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching ABC World from the capital. Here now, step into another top stories. UNESCO and other stakeholders uh, urged a collective collaboration to reach the goal of restitution of African historical assets. In collaboration with the Embassy of the Kingdom of Morocco and the organization, of International de la Francophone, UNESCO, organized a roundtable discussion aimed at addressing the vital issues of African cultural heritage restitution as a matter of global significance. Tigris Nessa has attended the event. Have a look. A roundtable to bring together experts, scholars, government representatives, international organizations, and civil society to better understand the issue of revitalizing African cultural heritage was held in Embassy of the Kingdom of Morocco here in Addis Ababa. Speaking on the occasion, Morocco's ambassador to Ethiopia, Naza Aliyu, urged for a collective cooperation to achieve the goal of restoring African historical assets. To reach the goal of the restitution of African cultural assets, close collaboration between African countries as well as constructive dialogue with the countries holding these cultural goods is deeply needed. UNESCO liaison, AU and UNECA Office Director Dr. Rita for her parts noted that the objective of this cultural flagship project is to support African Union member states in the fight against illicit trafficking of cultural property. The objective of this cultural, uh, of this flagship project is to support African Union member states in the fight against illicit trafficking in cultural property under the 1970 Convention, as well as facilitating the return and restitution of cultural property under the Intergovernmental Committee for Promoting the Right of Cultural Property to its countries of origin or its restitution in the case of illicit appropriation, as well as in the promotion of museums. These provisions are supplemented by the UNIDROIT Convention on Stolen or Illegally Exported Cultural Objects, which underlines that the possessor of a cultural object which has stolen shall return it. Ethiopian Minister of Culture and Sports, Gajela Medasa, for his parts, disclosed that Ethiopia is trying its level base to restitute a number of historical heritage diplomatically. Uh, as Ethiopia, uh, we have uh, different uh, historical heritage taken from Ethiopia uh, to Italy and some other countries uh, in different times uh, during uh, 1930s, 1940s and at different times. So uh, we are trying to bring it back diplomatically, actually, not without uh, any conflict. We are, we, are, we are taking all these uh, heritage back to Ethiopia and other countries. Uh, through such dialogue, uh, through dialogue and the demands, uh, and also through uh, studies, uh, studying about this issue. 
So this kind of meeting is very important uh, for Africans uh, to, to, to heritage. Finally, Nigeria's Supreme Court validated President Bola Ahmed Tinbu's election victory, dismissing the opposition's final appeal against his mandate five months after he came to office. Nigeria is one of the most populous nations that have been facing complications related with election over the past many years. Haftamu Ashagre has compiled African news. Have a listen. Most Nigerian elections have ended up in legal basis since Africa's most populous nation emerges from military rule in 1999, but the Supreme Court has never overturned a presidential election. And the judgment of the Supreme Court put a stop to shenanigans, put a stop to innuendos, put a stop to lies or trial in the media and public place. The court has demonstrated in this visible commitment to rule of law and humanity, and their commitment to do justice for all Nigerians. A seven-judge Supreme Court panel ruled as without merit the opposition appeals over claims of fraud, electoral law violation, and Timbu's ineligibility to run for president. I've started from day one to work hard, regardless of you know, uh, the court cases, okay? And uh, just strengthen my resolve uh, to do more. A challenge of this nature, uh, and a, a future of this nature is more work, and more hard work, more dedication. Aside from economic reformers, Timbu's government is also trying to tackle huge security challenges from a long-running jihadist insurgency in the northeast to kidnap gangs and inter-command clashes in other parts of the country. Well, that wraps up the news from EBC World. Thank you for being with us and enjoy the rest of the program. Thank Goodbye for me now.